Okay, let's take the, there's a poll on the screen. Let's take the poll. I want to understand how familiar we are with data mining and which of the Okay, great. Okay, great. Oh, great. Of oh, okay, great. This is good. Okay, this is good. Okay. Okay, this is good. Oh, so I like this. I've got a very good uh, a good mix in the house. This is really good. Yeah, I'm, I'm impressed with this. So okay, a good number was I familiar with data mining. So I'll just run through, a, I have a little slide I'll just run through briefly so that we don't waste so much time on slides. But it's a, this is an hands-on session. It's an hands-on session. Please let me know once you can see my presentation. Not okay. just coming up. Yeah. It's okay. fine now, sir. It's fine. Okay. Now. Thank you. okay, so I'm going to just walk through a, a little overview of uh, data mining. This is an interesting slide. So, we'll talk about some definitions, uh, branches of data mining, and some stuff there. So, basically, Data mining has to do with knowledge discovery. That is extracting previously unknown and potentially useful. That's the lessons of data mining. You've got a bunch of data and you want to see what, what can we build up of this? Something we don't know, something that we can see, the ordinary eyes will not see. That is the whole concept. Whatever name it has then transformed into data science, machine learning, business intelligence, the whole foundation is data mining. And we have talked of data mining, we talk about how do we uh, discover insights in, in databases. So part of effort to find this uh, hidden information database, how we fit into a model. You know, it has to do with some basics. Uh, you explore data, you look for tools to discover hidden insights within your data. Of course, one of the reasons why we everybody's getting interest in these days now is that the rate at which we are generating data is quite, I mean, tremendous. Most of data are now generated automatically. If you set up a small system now, before you know it, your data is. Let's do a good example. In those days, when people are going to the field for research data, people move around one location to another. At the end of the day, you ask them after two weeks, how many data have they collected? They tell you, ah, you collected just 200. But just imagine just putting this data in a Google form or uh, an, ex I mean, I mean, and all of this of online softwares for survey, and you share it. Before you know it, with the took of an eye, you've got people who are sponging data from all over the of the world. Of course, and this eventually leads to, I mean, we're now, we are now drowned in data, of course, and obviously starving from knowledge. So, look at those who are in the banking sector, look at the volume of data being data in the banking sector, or you look at the social media. Imagine you see a, a post, uh, let's say, uh, Elon Musk posts tweets. And before you know it, you've got thousands of comments, you've got millions of likes. People get, you get I mean, you get millions of views. Tell me how on earth you want to look at, you want to get sense out of that data set. I mean, this is large data set. And obviously, you always talk about the people in the bioinformatics the volume of data being generated in that sector alone is so enormous. So it's, it's very important that we mine data. I mean, 
consider the fact that the data being generated is quite enormous. And most of our computers are becoming cheaper by the day and more powerful. And obviously, the competition is very, very strong. Now people are interested in, let's give a good example in the telco industry now. Look at the weights at triple port. Oh, I, I don't like my MTN line anymore. I want to go to blue line. I mean, people chant as you leave one network to another. We are interested. Why are you leaving that uh, network? Or people are enrolling in the school and not completing the studies. Or people coming to your store to buy a produce and they don't complete, they don't make the final purchase. People are enrolling in, in the postgraduate program and for no good reason, they leave. You get your employer staff. Are you sure that that staff will not leave? In a couple of years, and these are things that we are beginning to get more into. So the competition is quite strong. Uh, so the rate at which we are collecting data is quite astronomical. I mean, look at the satellite image data alone. They are so enormous. And of course, our traditional technique might almost be feasible to handle this kind of data. So let's look at what is data mining and what is not data mining. You pick up your phone. Of course, once I pick up my phone, I know what I'm looking for. <laughs> it's obvious. I know I'm looking for, oh, I'm looking for engineer or quality number. It's obvious. Oh, I'm looking for additional program. It's obvious. I know what I'm looking for. Or oh, I go to this, I go, I go search uh, on the web about Amazon. I know what I'm looking for. But let's look at it this way. For example, now, in certain areas, Certain things are more prevalent. I mean, this, this is in Oh, really? Okay, let me give you a good example now. The current uh, speaker of the Ashwas of the representative, his name is Tajuddin Abbas, based in Kaduna. So, say any Tajuddin from Kaduna, like, ah, is anybody, do, 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 do Aousas be Tajuddin? So, it means that that name is not prevalent, it's just once in a while. Maybe oh, we must have some affiliation with. Yorubas. Or we look at uh, bets. Yes. For example, after the 2001 US bombing, Osama became an household name. People started naming their children Osama. So these are things that we, we discover from data mining. Okay. Or, or, or in, in search engine, I mean, you group sim together similar documents returned by uh, search engines according to their context. So that's some example of data mining. So let's put some things into perspective. Database processing versus data mining processing. You want to write a query. Your query has to be well defined. Select everything from, select first name, last name, okay, from tables, dash, 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 and it gives you a result. So for database, it follows specific formats. But for pause in data mining, I mean, you can imagine it's not explicitly defined like for, data, for database. For database, you must know all the commands you need to put, pull out uh, your data. And of course, for database, everything you are getting is more like just, you are actually getting a subset of database at every time. But I tell people, if you want to success in data mining, it's good that you, your knowledge of database is, ex, I mean, is excellent. Because if you have access to a raw database and you have, you know, you have knowledge of SQL, you can maneuver your database very well. So do I get your data? Because we all understand that in data mining, the large part of the work is getting your data ready in the desired format. Because most time, data does not come out well formatted. Look at this. Let's, let's look at this uh, example from database and data mining. Find all credit applicants with last name of Smith. Very straightforward. Let's say the guy's name is Smith something. I don't know his name. Okay. Find out all the credit applicants with last name of Smith. Very direct. Let us take another example. Identify customers who have purchased more than $10,000 in value of sales in the last month. Very straightforward. Now look at the data mining. Find all credit applicants who are at poor credit risk. 
you have customers you want to spend. That means you have their history. So you, but let me see the customers. Well. This one's so they are not good customers when it comes to credit rating. Look at another option. Identify customers with similar buying habits. You know, someone you go to uh, some of online shopping and you select some product and you tell, oh, the people bought what you bought also bought something like this. It is because they are continuously monitoring the records. Continu it's continuous. So nobody is having to update them. So oh, people who bought uh, T uh, la Apple, Apple laptop, they also bought Apple dongle. You can see how we are trying to bring together people with similar uh, buying habits. So, for data mining, when we make our decisions in data mining, I mean, what are the kind of databases we are mining? What knowledge are we looking to discover? What techniques? What applications? Is it adapted to? Because domain knowledge is also very, very important. So for data mining, we produce uh, descriptive data mining to predictive data mining. I don't work so much time on it, so it's a kind uh, of uh, aspect. For databases, our evolution database, time series database, legacy data, multimedia, these are databases I want to mine. So what knowledge are we trying to mine from these uh, places? Association, classification, clustering, and the likes. What techniques? For databases, we use a uh, data warehouse. For those who are familiar with very few people, those who are into tech, very few people have any reason to use uh, the OLAP, online analysis. Very few people have reason to use it. Most people use in the data science part, machine learning, statistics, visualization, uh, and neural networks. And this is applicable to all domain. Telecom, banking, fraud analysis, DNA, stock marketing, everybody needs uh, to work on this uh, aspect. So, for data mining tax, we look at prediction tax. You have some reviews to predict unknown or future values. For example, I walk into, I, I open my phone, I download an app, let's say uh, uh, some of these applications that are used for loaning money. I log in. Ask, it asks me some questions, blah, 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 blah. And the next thing, it gives me a rating. Am I, can it borrow me money or it cannot borrow me money? So it's trying to predict an unknown from the rules that are provided. Or you go to, you try to do an online transaction and for no reason, the system just flags that you can't process this. Is this suspect as a fraudulent transaction? These are things that are, happen every day to us. So for description, uh, we could look at a uh, woman interpretive part that describes the data. Uh, so minimal, maximum, all those kind of things follow the uh, descriptions. Uh, so some of the things we do in data may involve classification, clustering, uh, association rule, sequential pattern discovery, regression. So everything we do falls either into prediction or description. At the end of the day. So let's look at this uh, tree data mining. So we've got predictive, descriptive. So anything around classification, regression, time series, prediction is under prediction. Anything has to do with clustering, summation, association rules, sequence discovery. And this, on this, I, I mean, there's this uh, joke that one of our lecturers talked about in class. That a particular store, you know, let, let me give you an example first. There was an, an, uh, a research that was done in computer science, and they discovered that for students who attempt, who have a, who have a score on Hello, sir. A1 in chemistry. Sorry, okay. sir. So attempted, Sorry, sir. Uh, I hope I'm back. Am I back? Yes, yes, you are back. You are back. Am I back? Am I audible now? Okay. Okay, thanks so much. So there is this research, they did computer science. There are students who get a first class, I mean, who, who attempt, who gets an A1 in chemistry, okay? 
A1 in chemistry, and also in their O level, they have they attempted further mathematics. Such students are likely to graduate in first class. And I begin to wonder how come. I mean, it was a research output when they look at their data sets that those who had A1 in chemistry and attempted further mathematics, they are likely to come up with a first class. Another uh, instance in another research was that people who come to buy beer in a particular store, they also buy diapers. Come to buy beer and also buy diapers. I mean, I mean, I can you begin to explain that now. For those of us who have rich kids, you can imagine when you get home, in the night, you, are, you get very tired. And they tell you there is no pampas in the house. How does that sound your head? They tell you, oh, the, kid, the baby was stolen, and they, had, they, ran out, they used all the diapers, and so we don't have any pump, and we try calling your number, and unfortunately, uh, you know, stuff like that. So these are things that we need to understand. So for classification, you've got a collection of records with uh, uh, attributes. And of course, one of that is a class. You call it the target variable, whatever name you can call it. I think we should post here a bit so that let me, let's go to uh, what, okay, let's just let's move on a bit. I hope we have some, Good. Okay. So now you've got a collection of records, which uh, we call training sets in the data mining data science world. For each record, you have a set of attributes. You call it fields, you call it columns, anything you call it. You've got several of that. But of course, most importantly, you've got the final one, which is a class or the target variable which is most important thing. Now, what's our goal? Our goal is that we have agreed that for this particular target variable, all these attributes, they lead to that target variable. Oh, if you get, uh, if you have um, five credits sitting, English and maths, physics, chemistry, biology, you can, you can come in for computer science. That's logic. That's, so we have, we have agreed that, that if people have this kind of attributes, this is what they can come in for. That's quite simple. Or, oh, you are 40 years old, you are married, you work in a government place, uh, you've traveled to the, out of the country four times, you have blah, blah, blah. Oh, for this person, if we give him a loan of 20 million, he will not default. That's the idea. So if we see an, on, on, uh, I mean, another set of value now that we have not seen before, and that matches closely to someone that we have seen before, that we gave such money to, and the person funded, we are so sure that, oh, somebody who has similar attributes with what we have seen before is likely also not to default. This is how we use to test the accuracy of such models that are applied in data mining, in data science, as the case may be. So let's look at this example. A fish packing plant wants to automate the process of sorting incoming fish according to species. See, you have different species of uh, fish. I need to sort it out so that packing becomes easy. So, we're not trying to see, okay, what can we do to solve this problem? Can we develop something that has some sensors that we can use to do this sorting? So let's look at some of the features. The length, the lightness, the width, and the position of the mouth. These are the features that want to be used to distinguish the fish. The length, the lightness, the width, and the position of the mouth. Of course, the next thing comes to, oh, preprocessing. 
Okay, let's look at uh, these images of fishes separately. I mean, from one another. We're going to extract some of the features. Once you're able to extract one of these features, we're able to kind of classify them. Oh, based on this feature, based on this property, oh, this is a salmon. Oh, based on, oh, this is a sea bass. This is a classic example. You have several fishes. So based on these features, you can extract this feature to determine what category does uh, this fall into. So let's, uh, let's get into our orange and let's see what we can actually do. So of course, okay, let's maybe stop my sharing, my presentation. Okay, we're welcome. So let me launch um, my orange. I want to believe uh, a good number of us have orange stored on our laptops. I think we shared a poll a while ago. Let's see the poll again. Let's see the poll. I don't know. I, I will, I will, I will have access to the poll. It doesn't look like people have filled this poll. Okay, 16 people filled this poll. Okay. Okay. Oh, quite a good number of us uh, have not used orange mining before, data mining before. But good of us. Uh, oh, I love this. Almost everybody have done Excel. And so that's I have a lot of uh, statisticians on this call, if I'm not mistaken. It's okay, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. Okay, just a second. Yeah, I have a, I have a second poll I've just launched now. Let's please uh, complete the second poll also. That should take us just about 30 seconds. Let's complete the second poll. Okay, let's see the results of the poll. I was in the second poll. Oh, the second poll is not launching. It's, it's not launching, sir. Not launching. Not, not yet. Oh, of course, I needed to end the first poll. That's all right. So let me end the first poll. Okay, so now, okay, good. Are we able to see the second poll now? Yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> Nobody using Linux. Everybody using Windows and Mac. Of all data mining, you can use it across the three uh, operating systems. Okay, this is good. A good number of us have arranged install. This is good to make this session interesting. Only very, oh wow, that's interesting too.
Okay, good. I think uh, we've got 78% uh, participation. This is quite good. Uh, okay, so obviously, so we have, um, most of us are using Windows. Okay. Uh, 45% have installed and, okay, good. That's all right. So just a lot of us that don't have not used uh, Owen before. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so let's let me end the poll so that we can continue. Okay, good. Full end it. So there's the result. So a uh, good number of us uh, use Windows. That's fine. And very only just okay, good. That's that's a fair one. So let me launch. I'm um, assuming that uh, we have. We have, we have access to the site where I, I thought we can download uh, Orange. This is Orange site. This is Orange. Okay, this is Orange website. So this is Orange data mining logo. You can see it clearly. So data mining is fun. So once you get to this site, you can always click on the download. And like I told us, we've got it available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. It's available. And for those who use Anaconda, you can always go ahead and install uh, Orange and you'll be fine. If you want older versions, you have access to, to the older versions also. Okay, so to so download this, for those who are on the call, just go to this website and it becomes uh, easily downloadable for us. I'm also talking it on the, on the chat also, for those who want it on the chat. Okay, thanks so much, engineer. Thanks for, for, for having my back. Thanks so much. So. That's orange for us. Click on download orange. Mac. I use a Mac. So if I click on this now, the next thing, it starts uh, the process of downloading for me. The installation is quite pretty straightforward. I mean, it's something you can actually work through just next, next. You are not doing anything complex at all. And once you have that installed successfully, you, are gonna, you can now launch, go ahead and launch your orange. Okay, so if I'm launching this now, let me close my existing ones. Good. So I'm gonna launch this now. I go to my launch pad and I have orange somewhere here. This is orange. You can see the icon like I told us earlier. That's my orange. It's loading. Good. So this is what you see as a first timer when you load uh, orange. That's what you see as a first when you, when you load orange. As a first timer, you can see new, open, recent videos, tutorials, get started on their web, examples and documentation. I make sure I just always have this selected, this show as startup. I already, by default, I always have it selected. Okay, good. So this is orange. You can see you have this canvas over here. This white is your canvas over here. By default, for most of us, I'm sure we would not have, you have data, transform, visualize, model, Evaluate. Am I correct? Am I correct? Does any have more than that? Yes, sir. Unless you go and add add on. Good. Good. Awesome. So I said you have by default, you will only have what is displayed. If you now, oh, this what I'm doing, what I'm using are uh, orange for exceeds this. I can just come back to the um option and click on add-on. 
and click on add-on. So you can see now, this is the add-on. Because there are still more. By default, you've got data, transform, visualize. So if I want additional ones, I just to check the box and I'll have it. And it gives me like, like for bioinformatics now, I've got network for those who are into network or prototypes. If you click on it, you can only see the documentation of that particular. So if I click on any of this now, I can just go, I want networks or I want prototypes and I click on okay. It will attempt to install these ones I've just selected quite, quite easily, okay? I can always cancel that and uh, do that at some little time. Okay, thanks so much. So now, these are the, your controls, we call them widgets. So if I click on data now, you can see these are different controls under, uh, this, these are different um, widgets under the data. So you can see file, CSV, data sets, SQL table, data table. We'll try and see how we can do some of this as quickly as possible. Of course, Owen comes with some pre-built data sets. So if you don't have a data set, you can have access to some pre-built data sets in Orange. And also, you can also import your own data set into Orange. So if I click on this file now, you can see it drops widgets on my Canva. So how do I make this to work now? I can double click on this and it opens this uh, interface for me to work on. So like I told us, all it comes on pre-built data sets. If I go to file here, yeah, you can see the Titanic data sets, art, brown, iris, housing, and zoo. If I click on Titan, any of them, you can see me now. So we didn't see that one. We didn't see the- Are you serious? Five. Yes, sir. Oh my God. Just hold on a second. Okay. Is this visible now? Yes, sir. You can see now. Is it visible sir. now? Yes, it's okay, visible. Sir. Thank okay, thanks so much. So we can see now that these are all data on process of heart disease in patients. There are 303 instances, 13 features, some missing values, uh, category class, you can see category class with two values. So that this is, it. okay, so this is in, uh, the features here. So we've got name, gender, chest pain, and the like. So it's got, like it said, 13 features. And of course, at the end of the day, this is, the last one is always the class variable or we call it a target variable. If it's not specifically spied, most of the orange will assume that, oh, the very last feature is the target variable. Okay? Let me pick another data set, Iris. Can you see that? This is Iris. Look at this. It says it has three values for the class. And you can see it here, Ivy Setosa, Ivy Vasicolor, Ivy Virginica. And it's got 150 instances. Okay? So what about if I want to, I mean, upload my own data set uh, into um, Orange, it's also possible. What about if, oh, I walk us through, if, oh, my own data set is somewhere in the cloud, I have a URL to the file. Okay, so let me see if I've got um, a URL I can share. Okay, uh, let me assume I got to I have a Google sheet somewhere. Okay, I've got a Google sheet somewhere. Yeah, I've got this Google sheet somewhere. Okay, let me see if I can also copy this Google sheet to our for us, others can also have access to it. Okay. Okay. Done. So on the chat, I've got that sheet on the chat there also. For anyone who is interested in it. 
So if I come up to my file and I do paste this here, oh, I want to use a URL. Did you see that? I want to use a URL. What can we notice? What can we notice there? You can see this is my file. I've got states, the Twitter handle of the states, the governor, governor, the deputy governor, Twitter of deputy governor, and the party. So I've got about 36 records. And obviously, if I come back to my orbage also, you can see I have 36 instances. No missing values. Data has no tag variable. I don't have a tag variable. Except I now specify that, oh, I need to look for a tag variable, of course, by default now. I have to now specify that, oh, I want to have a tag variable uh, for this particular data set. Obviously, I mean, even myself, I was trying to look for what, what, what would my target be even in this data set. Well, I see my target variable is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is, what do you call it? Is the parties. But obviously, there was no target variable in this particular uh, data set. Okay? Good. So, these are all the various data set that comes with. Uh, Iris, I mean, with orange, it's located on that data set uh, folder. Okay? On that data set. So we can see all the various file formats that I can actually log in. I mean, I can upload. There are so many of them that I can actually upload. It's quite enormous. Okay, let's go on. Let's go, please. So. So that's false. Okay, so we eventually, okay, we are using uh, this, we're using this. Let me use the Titanic data set. Because you know, I'm using the Titanic data set, but we are presently mourning uh, those who went on the expedition. They wanted to visit the, the Titanic wreckage location. I don't know if people are aware about that. Are we aware? Yes. Yes, yeah. sir. So we, let's use uh, absolutely. But I'm sure that their data they, they, they will make their data set available to show us the details of those that actually. I, I, I pray so. <laughs> so it's good. It's a good one. So we it's an effort. So we shouldn't. Uh, I mean, it's an effort that they have impact on it. We Maybe it's researchable. We can yeah, research it. Yeah, success. <laughs> Okay, so I'm using the Titanic uh, data set that comes with uh, Orange. So I've got my Titanic data set in there. What do I want to do now? I want to, now I've just obviously uploaded data set. I want to explore this data set. I mean, how do I even see what's inside the data set? First of all, I have what I call, what we call data table. You can decide to come here, drag this here, okay? Can you see, uh, anytime you move your mouse to the widget, there are two things you will see. There's uh, these dotted lines in front and also dotted lines at the back. For those that have dotted lines in front only, it means that there's, they don't have an input. This is, back is input, front is output. So for the file now, the only thing for the file is that, oh, it doesn't have an input, but you must select, you must provide it something that you use to produce an output, which is a file location. You can see for the data table, it's got both uh, an input and what, and an output. So it means that the output of this data, uh, this file widget will be needed as input for the data table. So if I drag this now, don't drag it. I'm going to click on it and drag it. Do we see that? Let me do it again. I'm going to click on this 
and drag it here. So you can see that now, oh, it's, oh, data has been moved from this file to data table. For some people, oh, I don't like Wala Javi. I can, I can just click on drag on this straight. I just drag on this straight like this. Once I click on this straight, okay, it will list out the possible widget that I can connect to it. Immediately, it lists out the possible widget that I can connect to it. This data table provides an overview of the data and allow me to inspect the individual attributes. So if I click on this now, voila, you can see then that it shows, oh, this guy is connected somewhere. But this guy still should do that, oh, I'm not connected to anybody. I can click on this to see the data. So I can now see the raw data. I can see it. I have 2,201 instances of this data set. You can see it. You can see it. Okay, so this is how I can easily look at my data set up till the last data set, 2001. Okay. Good. So that gives me an idea of what is in my data set quite easily done. Of course, now that I have an idea of what's in my data set, we also have another um, widget called data info. Data info. So it gives me information about my data set. Oh, it's, the name is Titanic. It contains 2,201 rows, four columns. The feature of three categorical, uh, the target view has two classes. Description, the data is from real Titanic passengers and their survivor. Auto, cargo. So when you're writing, any, if you're writing this data set now, you know how to properly say, oh, this is the source of data. Even though we know that we are accessing data directly from Orange, but yet Orange still went ahead and told us the source of our data sets. So that is quite good, right? Okay, good. Okay, so now what else can we do with this, uh, our data set now? We can look at some distributions. Would that not be fine? Okay, let me come again. I drag my widget again to look for distribution. Again, so I've got distribution here now. Okay, so <laughs> let me click on distribution. Okay, so for distribution now, I can see this is my uh, here. This is the blue says that oh, no, not survive. The red. So, yes, survived. So, we can see for female and male now, we can see the output the distribution. If I move my mouse over it, it will tell me what is there. Can you see? For male, we have a total of 1,731 male in this data set. What about female? Of our female, we've got 470, 21.35 percent. And look at the female that survived, 73.9 percent. Okay, based on the group of females. But if you are looking at the overall, can you see the percent also? 15.63 percent. So this are This has really helped to make our life so easy. Okay, so let me create a report about this now. Create and display a report about this now. Can you see this icon here? Good. You can see this now. So I can save this now as what? As a PDF or as HTML, depending on what really uh, suits my intention. Whatever format it brings this out for us, we can always, at our convenience,
play with it as much as possible. Okay? So this is now, okay? How about status? Based on status, we've got four status. First class, second class, third class, or crew. So looking at this now, this is uh, the, the distribution, right? So once you move your mouse over this, you get more figures, more output uh, from the displayed image. Okay. Good. Survived. Yeah. Survived only, irrespective, irrespective of status. Survived only. No. Yes. So obviously, uh, how many people survived? 32% survived, which is uh, based on data sets uh, provided. Okay, let's move on. So these are some of the things uh, we can actually see from this uh, distribution. Okay, so if you look at uh, the outputs, if you click on this again, if you look at the output, it tells you what are those things that we can actually connect this to us to. Where can we connect distribution source? To? Let's click on it and drag it. Let me try scatter plots. So what do I have on my work? I don't have any data. Let me use the uh, file directly. Okay, so uh, I think the way I connect it to this. That's the beauty of Orange. You can always determine what you are connecting to at any point in time. Survived. Sex. This is not is a, a crazy data. I don't mind the data set. It's a crazy data for this particular uh, exercise that I'm trying to do. And easily, if I don't want any widget, I can just click on it and press delete. You can see that and press delete. And that gives me uh, something very, very interesting. Okay. So still on my file again. Okay, where can I do this again? Bar plots. Let's see bar plots. Okay. Oh, don't have it. Okay, let me pick from the deep, but data table if it to give me some sense. Because sometimes you need to be careful when you're using uh, some of these widgets. It still will not allow me to do that. Why is it not allowing me to do that? Is it because they are all categorical people or what? Let me use my distribution again. Okay. Can I do a bar plot here? Let me change the data sets. To data, all the data sets. Okay. It still won't allow me to do this. Oh my God. And I would have loved to. Anyway, let's move on as, uh, as quickly as possible on this. Uh... So let's move on. So now, after I have my data set connected, what are the things that I can do? with the Titanic data sets. So let's do the first one, uh, which is we did the uh, distribution, which is uh, quite interesting. So what about other things that we can do on this Titanic data set that will feel be interesting uh, for our work? Our work, what can we do? Maybe? For this, our work that we I mean, because on that processing, we want to see things that we can do. Uh, we want to normalize, discretize, and stuff like these are processing steps that we can actually do for the Titanic uh, data set. If I try to discretize, okay, let's say, is it going to give me any 
I mean, okay, anything meaningful. Unfortunately, we still cannot because all our features are still what category. So it means that for the processing of our categorical data sets, I mean, uh, category data, we cannot do anything except we do what we convert some of this into what um, numeric data that will now allow us to apparently do what be able to. Um, how do I call it? To see some of the things that we can do in a data set. For machine learning, for data set, for data mining, one of the things we emphasize mostly, oh, we want to use the algorithm. So can we use Iris? Let's see how we can begin let's to. Use Iris okay, let's try Iris. Okay, that'll be good. Let's try Iris. Yeah, let's, that's good. Let's try Iris. Okay. Good Iris. Okay, so. Good Iris. Good. This is Iris. Cataplot on Iris. This is Cataplot on Iris. If you look at this data set now, for Iris, uh, what can we notice in this data set? What can we notice? Is there a clear demarcation in terms of the clustering? There's no clear demarcation in terms of clustering. Except for what? Except for what? Except for this blue. Uh, Iris. Uh, Yes. For side. Yes. Aha. So it, but for Virginica and uh, Vasicolo, I mean, it's, it's, it's very tough. Okay, let's so, try and change the axis. Let's try and change, uh, let's use Petal. What about, for, so you can see that whatever, either I use Petal lens, Petal weeds, you will see it is obvious that Setosa stands in a world of his own. Yes, it's quite clear for for Setosa. Do you notice that? Yes. Whatever you use on your exercises, is it will largely stay. Setosa stands clearly out. You can see the moment we are changing the petal, even Vasicolo and Virginica, they are beginning to do what stand clear. True or false? That's true. That's true. Okay, so you can see the beauty of tools like this now. You are not writing any code to see things changing immediately. You don't write so much code. Okay. Better with Stenaha. Someone Separate. wrote in the comment that he or she is not getting it. Oh. In the chat, rather. Okay, you can speak up. You can speak up. Francis Ajay, you can speak up. Just let's be. Let's know what you are actually not getting there. It's, it's not a, you can let us know. I, have you installed this? Yes, I've installed it. Okay. At what point are you stopped? Yeah, I was trying to, and I power out power up another system so that I can be using one to practice and use one to see clearly. Okay. Now, what I want to be following as you are clicking on it, but the other okay. system that I powered that I've installed Orange on yesterday. Now, how you got air from the, okay, file okay, okay. the first page is okay. Okay, okay. Let me let me let me close. Let me close it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. okay. Take everything out. So this is it. So I've got, I've got a blank canvas right now. Okay, sir. So I click on file. Oof. I, I have file on. added file. Okay. First widget. Okay. Double click on it. Okay. So under the file, I'm using the Iris tab, Iris database. Okay. Okay, once you have that selected, I can close the window. Okay? So if I want to see my table now, I can see my table, how it looks like, my data table, I can drag data table today. Those try, once, click on, once you click on these dotted lines, okay, okay move, drag it out. Yes. It gives a connector. It's responding, sir. Okay. It gives a connector. <clears throat> yes. So you cannot select a uh, data table. All right. Data table. Yeah. So, so with this data table now, if I open this now, I can see what my data looks like. I have yes. my own problem because I selected show numeric values. If I take this out now, it will be like normal for everybody again. Okay. But if I click on show numeric values, I want to see values that are numeric 
at a group. This is very important. Also, oh, anybody having numeric values there at a group. Okay. So you can see I've got 150 instances. Yes. Four, one, yes. two, three, four, right? And I've got yes. my target variable has three classes, three values. Yes. Right? Yes. I can close it now. So, and I went back to my file, okay? I dragged a scatter plot. I dragged again, select a scatter plot. In fact, if I, if, if I love, what I love about Orange, sometimes when you are so confused on what to do, once you drag like this, if I, you can be picking each of this, you can see if I pick on distribution, for example, now. Okay? Look at my distribution. Okay. This is my distribution. Okay. Okay. So if you want to try, you can just the default. That's why I always like drag. When you drag, it will tell you what are those you can actually connect this to. So if okay. I start a plot also, what we just did now, start up plots. Now, what do you notice? Do you notice the speed that to engineer actually? Do you know the speed that took it respond? Yeah, the speed was quite uh, so fast <laughs> in terms of milliseconds. <laughs> you be like, you be like, ah, is this thing real? Oh. <laughs> you know, so that's the beauty of this thing. So you can see now, I've, I've opened up my tablet. Now, for my axis, so I'm picking petal width at the x-axis and separate length. I'm trying to see what best gives me a clear demarcation, a clear demarcation. I'm trying to look at what best gives it to me. So you can see if I have petal width on the x-axis and separate length. I mean, this is, this, is, this is one of the best, right? Can anybody confirm that? This is one of the best, right? Yes, 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 yes. But you can see, I can still see that at some point in time, there's an overlap somewhere here. Look at this now. Can you see this? Can we see this? There's a double option. Is that not true? Yes. So, for this now, if I'm interested in why is this an overlap there? <laughs> Sarah says she's just watching. I understand. Don't worry. Just you keep watching. You, 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 it's not important. You, you know, you know how this is getting interesting now. I mean, the most important thing for training like this is I can eye open now to see what the possibilities. And you can always access a lot of online resources uh, online. I mean, YouTube and even the documentation for oil itself. Now, look at this now. Look at, I mean, I'm looking at, I can see that this is something here. You can see there's the point here. This is also close. Can we see it? Yes. This is also close, right? So for this guy that are close now, I can decide to, I mean, to pick, to, to I like them. Do you see that? Yes. Do you see that? No. I highlighted them. So let me go and see them proper. This guy that I highlighted, let me see it. Let me pull it out into the data table. You know what I'm there? What's, what's there? Can you see that? Is this making sense? Yes. So easily, I can okay. What's up? Why is this guy that I just uh, vesicle and vagica? Can let me see what's, I mean, what's their problem? You can see that truly, truly, they actually fall within the same range. True of course. You can see if you inspect it very well, you can see it. They actually fall because there's 5.1 here, there's 5.1 here. Is that not so? Yes. So you can kind of look at, oh, why is this happening? So this gives you, makes you understand, oh. So in case, this is very important for uh, explainability. Oh, I mean, wh wh why is this happening? I can pick that particular data point and know what on what basis the they, device take that decision. Mm -hmm. Ah, Mr. Ujo, you should have done this installation earlier. You can't be doing installation at this time. It's be tough, I understand. Just, Go ahead, don't let the instruction just, just ensure you are following through, please. It's very important. Okay, so easily I can have an idea of what is actually happening there. Okay, let me drag my file again. You're welcome. Let me drag my file again. Okay, 
uh, data info. Okay, we've seen data info before, right? So what's in data info? Okay, so uh -huh. you can see, so if you are citing this particular work now, you know how you're going to cite it uh, properly. I hope we are doing good. Okay, so this is the data set, Irish flood data sets, and everything you know about this data. And then this is a reference paper, which Fisher used to, to get this out of the way. Okay, so. Okay, oh, we've got bar plots. Okay, so this is bar plots. Aha, ooh. Okay. <laughs> so this is bar plot now. As we can see for Setusa, of Vasicolor and Virginica. And you can see based on separate lengths. Is this not, is this not is, I mean, I don't you like this visual? Is it not making sense? And this is just effortlessly. It's just effortlessly. So I keep telling people that it's not everybody that needs to write Python code. It's not everybody that needs to write R. It's not everybody that needs to go and pay for expensive softwares. There are a lot of softwares out there that will give you fantastic results. Fantastic results. And you'll be fine. Okay? Based on separate lens. Okay, separate widths. So you can for separate widths, right? Petal length. I mean, so you can, everybody can see that, oh, as, as long as petal length is concerned, though, Setosa has the least uh, length. You can see none of them exceeds uh, the two centers. I mean, True. none of them exceed that. Yeah. And you can see Virginica as the highest. Almost seven. And you get, and almost, you can see, I mean, almost all these points. So that's, these are things that we can actually uh, easily see from there. Petal width, so for, so for petal width and petal length, Virginica clearly stands out. <laughs> Setota is not doing it at all when it comes to petal width. So this is, these, are, these are things that makes this, this is what we call insight into your data set. Patterns that ordinarily you can imagine look, having to look at all through the figures one after the other. Will it be easy to, to see this kind of insights? Obviously, it will not. Okay. I can close this. So let me go again. Uh, okay. We've done back. Okay. Oh, I love this. Tree. Let's look at tree. Let's look at tree. Um, okay, this app tree now. So to see tree, I need a tree viewer. Did you see that? To, to assess what the, the tree, I need a tree viewer. So let's look at how the, how the decision tree come to place. So this is petal length. Okay, so if petal length is less or equals 1.9, you are set to <laughs> 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 True. So, so let oh, yeah. do I, do I still have that? Eh? Is that not fine? It's so fine. we all know that Setosa is so is so is the, I mean sure. the petal and the petal is so small. Yeah. Look at the way he just bought out Setosa effortlessly. I don't know if I'm if we are this is quite getting interesting. Yes, we understand. So effortlessly, it just sets up Setosa, Setosa out. Yes, you do you your you, you, wallet no plenty at all. Now, hmm. you know, Peter, let's go to Peter Witt. If Peter Witt is greater than 1.9, so it's agreeing, it's made also that both Virginica and uh, Vasicolo, their Peter Witt is by default greater than 1.9. So yeah. now, are we together? The Peter Lens. So now, if now, yeah. that's Peter Witt now, if for Peter Witt, if it is also um, less. Or equals 1.7. Yes. Okay. Right? Yes. And also, the petal length again is less than or equal to 1.9. It is vasicolor. Yeah. This is because you know we also we can configure that 
both vasicola and vagina because they overlap in some instances. You can see why their own tree is, is, is much, much deeper. Yeah. Are we good? Yeah. And it's able to try to tell you the degree of certainty. Look at Betosa, no wala, 100% in 50 over 50 effortlessly. Look at this guy now. It is said that though it's likely 97, but also at a 2.1 percent, it can still be hydrogenica. This is what I like about uh, orange. The the explanation explanation of it is always very very, I mean, visible and easy to write any reports uh, with, with it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, we will get access. Uh, you get access to this. We we actually sent me out to directing people to go to the web to pick up the installation file. We made those notes were sent twice. I understand. It's, you get access to the recordings. Okay. Okay. So let's see, see what on that file. What can we see? pick up on that file again? Data sampler. Hmm. Data sampler. Okay, so I want to select uh, a sample of a subset of my entire data set on the subset uh, as much as possible. Okay. Okay, so let's, let's, uh, let's, what, what are we looking at? Let me see. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Number of instances one. Cause validation, number of subsets. Let's see the output is going to give us for the data sampler. This is it. Okay, thanks, Toy Jima. It's okay. So now, if I go to my data table now to see what this data sampler looks like, you can see now I have got uh, 105 out of the, uh, the 150 as user sample for me. So you can always use various techniques to get your data sampling out. Okay. So, box plots. Let's look at box plots. Effortlessly. Can you see the box plots? Yes. Hmm? Is this interesting? Yes. In this small application, look at the number of things that they are packed to make life so much easier for us as much as possible. And of course, if I'm done, I can always save my work. I can save my work. Give it Iris workflow. Save my work. So my work is saved. So as much as possible, you can do a lot of things just within that only. Okay. okay. Within that, that only. You can see so many things you can actually violin plots. I think uh -huh. look at violin plots. These are violin plots. So whatever plots, anything you can imagine is all drag and drop. And tomorrow, this is still one of the most easy to use no code tools. But the sad part is somebody asks a question some time ago that if orange is so easy to use, how come people are not using it? As everybody would ask that, why come people are not using it? The major reason is that, one, uh, where orange was designed, they are mostly uh, bioinformaticians on one side. Then it's also like case of Telegram and WhatsApp. It's God that decides which tool will see the limelight as much as possible. That's just my own conclusion. Don't mind me. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Sir? sir, I want to also contribute. You are saying that why orange was not used hmm. by many people is because uh, many people doesn't know the power and hmm. the and uh, what is inside orange. Because I know there are some papers. Uh, 
me and somebody we wrote together, it was all in, we used to analyze everything, even up to the uh, neural network and every other thing. And they did not reject it. So it depends on how we are able to know that, oh, Orange can also do the same thing that we're also looking for in Python or in other languages without stress. Yeah, correct. At least for this call now, we had 92 people registered for this call. And I think our, our, our peak has not been more than 22 or so. So it's just, it's, yeah, correct. It's the same thing. So I think it's just a. Uh, Maybe we should start an orange community in, in Nigeria. Maybe the people will get people to use it as much as possible. I expect people who are not taking happy that they don't they don't have to go through the stress. Because sometimes when you look at the stress of people looking for somewhere to analyze their data for them, sometimes when you're, there are tools that once you know what you are doing, you can just easily drag and drop and you're able to get to uh whatever you 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 you, you want to do at the end of the day as much as possible. Okay. So I think that's uh, that's quite good. Okay, so let me try another. I mean, uh, let me open another Canva. Okay, good. I've got another Canva. This time around, I want to look at what's happening within the area of text. Area of text. How's your day going? Okay, so if I click a corpus now, okay. Oops, okay. don't mind me. I'll be here if you need anything. So I've got a corpus uh, here now. So where is my data coming from? Please, please come again, sir. Yeah, I want to try using how data. You, how, you pick, how you pick another canvas? Okay, please. oh, do you have text in stock? Do you have text. text? Okay, I just want to file a new now to open another new canvas. File new. File new. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Give me another. Uh, Canva. Okay, which one do you now pick? Now, so let me pick the data first. Let okay. me pick the data first. So, you know, for text mining, there are many options. You can decide to go through Twitter. Uh, you can, for example, if you have access to tweets, you can use Twitter for tweets. Oh, if, oh, me, I don't have access to tweet, oh. Sorry, data mining. Sorry, data mining, text mining is not in my own. Oh, can you quickly install it if you need to install it? Yeah, under widgets, options, options. add on. Under options, add on. You will see text somewhere there. Option, add on. Yeah. It's, an, it's nice that we have it. Okay, so it's okay. Okay, I should, I should now add words now. Sorry. Okay. Text. Have you seen text there? Yes, I've seen text. Yeah, so I click on text. Select the okay. checkbox text. Okay. Right. Okay. I've done that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. And click OK. Yeah, click OK. Okay. So what do you have? Installing or three text. Okay, good. Okay, good. Okay. That's nice. So what now? So now you you will see that within a short while, okay. you get installed uh, there easily. Okay, sir. Okay, so now let's see how we can bring in some purpose into our text. Okay, someone asking a question again. Just a second, please. Okay, so now. I need to bring my corpus. And how do you get that done? What's the corpus? Maybe I should first, what's the corpus? Corpus is a collection of text. Corpus is a collection of text. By the time you have a folder, let's say you have a folder now containing uh, manifestos or constitutions of all the political parties in Nigeria, automatically you have done what? You have a corpus of what? Constitutions. I mean, political parties, constitutions. A lot of research in today's world now are into text mining. I mean, I'll call it NLP. Yeah. Because a lot of texts are also being generated. I know for 
Okay, it's not like tabular data that you have, you have columns containing features, blah, blah, blah. But for text, you have data in an unstructured format. Is that good? Yes. You have data in an what? Unstructured format. So for this particular one now, let me go to my data. Let me go to file. Do we have any file here? Okay, I think we have the Grim. Uh, wait, oh, Grim is not here. No. Let's go, to, let's go to, let's go there again. Uh, where is our corpus? We have a data set for corpus. So you picked the uh, under data, not under data, my, not under yes, data. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's not that data set. Okay, just one second. I must forget it. I must forget this. Then a while I use the text part. Where's my text mining again? Text mining. Okay. Uh, Grim sales. This is it says, it says Grim sales is there. It's actually there. It's actually there. Under where it's, let's look where it is located. Under where it's located. Somewhere there. This is it. These are the various um, corpus that came with, um, that came with um, this guy. I'm trying to see how I can pick it up from here. I just want, I can't remember the location where it is anymore. Somewhere there. It's just somewhere. Can I search? Uh, oh my God. Oh my God. Just hold on a second. Data. Let me say, Lianas, not under any way yet. Data sets. Ah, no. I still saw you today. I just, I was just not observant about it. I was just not observant about it. I was just not observant about it. Let me see if this will give me anything. Okay, this is fine. Okay, okay, okay. So I can't charge you without the file. So I can just use that for the corpus here. Are we together? Yes. So just click on the corpus and add the corpus file. Twenty sixteen election tweet. Okay. So source original author place content. This is the this is the main content. So if I open the corpus viewer, good. This is the corpus viewer. So for each of this is, for each of the tweets, you can see the tweet here. The question, blah, blah, blah. This is the author, okay? This is the time it was tweeted. Can we see it? Is it a retweet? Are we together? Okay, how many times the people retweet it? How many times people, the people liked it? They took out the, uh, lo lo the location because most people don't actually switch off their location. So we've got about uh, a good uh, number there. Okay, so this is good. Good, so. We've got our corpus. This same data could have been in an Excel doc that we will get out. So these are data sets, something simple like this. Okay, so what can we do? Uh, what can we do with this now? Let's try and do some preprocessing. So for preprocessing in text mining, what are those things that we do? I can see bag of words. I mean, I want to, okay, lemmatize, take out tokens, mm -hmm. all those stuff that we actually do. Are we forgotten them? Yeah. These are things that we can actually do. So let's look at bag of words. Bag of words. Good. So this is bag of words now. Okay. So time frequency, document frequency. Okay. Let me take this into where a data table. Oh, don't crash! Oh, aha! 
It's good. I like this example. This is something that will always happen to you in Orange. Maybe it's going revive. Orange, your man crash, you go. <laughs> so it means that every time you are working, you must make sure so, you are saving your work. Are we together? Orange yes. crashes a lot. Please. Orange classes a lot. So you need to understand that. Are we together? Yes. To understand yes. that orbit classes in law. So if I click on close now, uh, thank God it didn't scatter my, it didn't, it didn't scatter my uh, obvious new data. So there, there's new data. Uh, why, is there, why is there new data? Why is there new data? Uh, is it too big for you to, to assess? It's, it's, it's actually the data is actually there. Anyway, let's let's uh, let's do something interesting. Uh, uh, now that we have uh, a corpus, let's do something. Let me close it again. Let me close this guy again. Let me close this guy again. So let's drag. Um, uh, what do we call it? A topic uh, modeling into it. Let's see if it gives us something interesting. Okay, so the proposal is over there. You can see. It's somewhere here, the processing text, it's somewhere here. Yes. Eventually I saw it. Aha, those who are in NLP. <laughs> Have you forgotten all these parts? No. You lowercase, hmm? stop words. You stop words, yeah. I use them, English stop words. Yeah, if, depending on the language you are doing. So if you are doing French, you do you can you can use French top words also. Okay. So tokenization, you can see PS tags also. Mm -hmm. Everything you can, everything you, you can write with code, you can do it here conveniently. Everything you can think of. So what are we with, with lowercase, right? Um, what does we want again? This is let's just accept the default, right? So yes. I don't see how many tokens we have at the end of the day. So it's a five thousand plus five thousand. Okay, good. Good. So we've got that now, right? So I think we can now drag a topic model at this point now. It's fine to do that now, right? So let's do a topic model. I can do a word cloud. I can do a word cloud. Quite easily done. Did you see that? Yeah. Aha, yeah, so. <laughs> you can imagine the code you write, you have to write for this. Yeah, in Python. In Python. <laughs> I think I'll have to use this. <laughs> you have to use no, you, 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 you must use this source. You must use it. Yeah. Even for, for every day, for every day, play, play, save, for some simple, simple analysis. Simple, simple thing. You can easily get this out of the way. Yes. <laughs> so I can see that Trump is the most, uh, I mean, visible uh, one that has the highest um, word count, apart from those uh, HTTPS and HTTPS stuff, followed by Larry. OK? The number of times they are called there. Because the number of times a word or call will tell me the, the size, the, how big it will appear in uh, in the word cloud. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I was talking about uh, topic modeling the other time. So topic modeling. Okay. You can see is is uh -huh. So you can see it is working on the topic modeling. So what kind of topic modeling? Why is it taking that long? It should not take that long. So why are we using topic modeling? We want to identify the major topics, the major themes, uh, you know, in that discussion, in that text that we have. Good, I think we are done. I think it's done, right? Yes. Right okay, so let's open it up. Uh -huh. hmm. 
This is good. If you want to, can you imagine? Engineer, okay, Wale? I'm with you, sir. <laughs> So, I, I use I, I use this part very well anyway. Aha. Uh -huh. So you know it makes you, you look at the number of Python line you have to write to get this done. Just try and imagine it in your head. Just try and imagine it in your head. Okay, so these are things that we can always uh, easily play with as much as possible. You can say I can change the algorithm as much as possible. Okay. I can use LDA, I can use HDP, I can use NMS. So I can, these are things that will make our life so easy. And of course, a high. Of course, when it comes to NLP, because like, like we told us now, you can compare text and numbers, way, even for us that do NLP. Most of the time you are doing NLP, you want to do it on collab. Sure, of course. You, yes. you don't run it on your system because it won't, it won't finish. Hmm. And the, So you can see for screen up, please. Okay. Am I connected back? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Am I connected now? Yes, mm -hmm. we can hear you. Don't mind me. It is the people that went to the RAM market that are calling me for RAM price. <laughs> you know, so you can see depending on whichever one you use now you will see the, the keywords that are prominent in that, uh, in that, in that purpose. It, they become very, very visible. Are we good? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Ms. Okushala is asking that, can this algorithm be fine-tuned? Ms. Okushala, you can do anything. Because you can import, you can use orange within your Jupyter notebook. So that will give you so much. So a lot of abstraction takes place already. So fine tuning becomes what much, much, much easier. Is that not so, Engineer Kuali? Yes, yes, you can do that. Yes. So the abstraction, a lot of, so you, 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 you can do a lot of fine tuning because you can access this same orange within your, uh, what do you call it? You do anaconda. anaconda so. Is as I mean very easily. So it's something that is, I have, it, it, it saves a lot of learning, learning, learning. Now you know, you know, you are you know what you are doing, a lot of abstraction takes place, and easily you get that done uh, as quickly as possible. Is this is it not making sense? Yeah, it is. Oh, yes. so, uh -huh. so okay, so let's let's. So I always I encourage people that they should first so for those of us that that's familiar with Twitter. If I uh, bring tweets down, this is Twitter now. Okay, if I open it up and I put in my uh, API key, okay, and stuff like that, I can have access. I can search for words and I have access to tweets. Okay, because it means that. I can do a lot of stuffs in this uh, stuff, right? Okay, okay. Let me see if I can do uh, one more thing in this. Let me see if I can do one more, one more thing uh, on on my text. That would be very interesting for for me. I mean, I can do sentiment analysis. Won't it be nice? It should be. Mm -hmm. So let's see how we can do sentiment analysis using our uh, orange. If you go to uh, our text, you'll see that we have 
sentiment analysis there also. This is the summary here, sentiment analysis. So what does it take from us? It accepts what? A compass, right? And it gives you what? An output. It expects a compass, and at the end of the it also gives you what? An output. So let's try it, let's try it, let's, let's try it. So let's connect the sentiment analysis into our purpose. Okay. Into our purpose. Oh, it's training, it's training it all. Oh, it's done with training it. Hmm? So I can connect this to where? A data table. Is that also? Yeah. And I can see my output there. Can we see it? Yes. Positive, negative, neutral. Why is it really done? Positive, negative, neutral. These are things that this is I would just do like like play like play. Ask the people, they'll tell you it's for easy. This is good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, you're welcome, sir. Uh, this is the I advise us that not after hello. Hello, sir. Good morning, sir. Connection back. Good morning, sir. Yeah, you're all done, sir. We have it too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, want to, I, want, I want to ask because uh, all this while I've been listening to your presentation, uh, though I'm new to Orange, yeah, but all this, your output to me, fantastic. Yeah, but uh, I probably. Because maybe because I'm socially so more maybe inclined to this that's going to be thing. I'm not I can't I can't get the the meaning from all these colors. Huh? Maybe can we you know after this uh, result, can we change this maybe to some research that maybe for the for the IS, I don't know what is what is the retweet, yeah? Maybe for the false and the and the and the true, we can have maybe probably the statistics. So that I can say, okay, for the truth now, we have maybe 10% for the uh, for the false, we have this percent, and all these red uh, and uh, blue lines, we can have them summarized. Can we do that in, in or in orange? Thank you, sir. I'm sure I didn't get that question. Okay. Is Probably because that question. Aha. Uh -huh. Probably somebody in, in this may maybe in this or maybe uh uh, what analysis can put it in a better way shows that if you have analyzed to this extent can we can we now categorize all these your blue lines and then um, your green lines so no, no, make... like, don't let this confuse you let me okay, now let me this this is just this is just for telling you this place are numbers i just this is this visualize if i take this out now they are just numbers okay so let it confuse you this now visualize me. I want in my data. Let's have a data set now. Okay. And at a glance, I want to see where are the numbers, which field data contains number. That's why I have this. So okay. once I, it has no meaning. Okay, okay, good. good. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You know, sometimes we have some data set and some line number will just enter into the data that's supposed to be there. So to easily spot it out for you. Ah, this column is also the numbers. You have numbers there. Oh, okay, that's okay, good. I hope, I hope I, so thanks so, so now let me continue let me thank you uh, one final thing okay where is my people says test this guy is here can I do an NER here oh can I get an NER it won't give me I want to see if I can actually get a uh, a name entity recognition okay let me see Mm. Okay, let me now see if I can get 
Jesus gave me that. N-E-R. Why is God not giving me an N-E-R? Okay. I want, do you have N-E-R here? Name entity recognition. Why is God not giving me an N-E-R? It's not giving me an N-E-R. Don't you have it there? Let's see, do we have an N-E-R here? Maybe we don't even have it saved. I mean, what is not, what is not existing? Oh, I love this question. Ah, somebody said, can always be used for image? Yes. Oh, let's, that is nice. Let's try an example using image. Let me save this. Let me save this. Text workflow. Let's save. Let's use uh, orange for image. Let's open a new Canva. Let's open a new Canva to do image analysis. So for those who don't have it, if you go to options, add-ons, can we see images there? Can we see images there? Image is there. Can we see it? Yes. Image is there. Yes. yes. So Image can... analytics. Yes, it's there. Because they, they, nobody's, nobody's, uh, they don't want to miss out uh, never to anybody. Nobody, nobody, nobody's going to be left out. Nobody's going to be left out. So this is image analytics. Okay. So I can import image. You can see that now. I can import image. Do I have any image on my laptop? Pictures. Oh my God. Oh my. Oh my show. No picture on my laptop. Oh. Ah, this is not fair. Not even one. Ah. And so my case comp complex switch. This is my this is screenshots. Why do you by link? Okay. Okay, I have two images now. I have, have two images. This page that. Is that? The image has to be like an image in a folder. Yeah, of course, I picked a folder, I picked my desktop. No, I picked my desktop already. You do get that? Uh, maybe we can put the no, image. I picked my desktop. Laptop. I have image on my desktop. I picked my desktop. I have two images there. You can see it. <laughs> yes, two images. Can see the information? Yes. Yes, sir. I guess so, yeah. So let me, and I connected with an image viewer. So let me see what I have. Can you see that? Can you see that? I can see the two images that I have. Okay. Is that, is that quite good? Okay, so now that I have um, an image there now, what are the things I can do with this my images, okay? So I can preprocess this. You to preprocess this. I hope this one will work for me. Mm. Will it work for me? Aha. Mm. What is it preprocessing there now? <laughs> This is not for preprocess image. This is for data. Mm, tell me what I can do. Okay. Okay. Let's see image embedding. Mm? Let's see image embedding, right? Okay. Unfortunately, I do have. Okay. Let me see if I can com, 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 guide this guy into uh, image embedding. Okay. Extract your for image embedding is going to extract meaningful features from the image using uh, deep learning models. Okay, are we together? Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's, it's not the image is normal. So obviously, aha. So you can see now. I'm supposed to have up to two. How many figures am I supposed to have? Up to 2048 features. So that I studied my image very well for me now. 
Okay, this is the size, this is the width, this is the height, and every feature it can get. Because I mean, for me, it's, it's going to get it out of the way. Okay, let's look at image embedding. So you can see the embedder that it's using V3, Google says a V3 mode uh, on ImageNet. I can still choose others, BGG 16, BGG 19, as much as possible. Okay. Are we together? Mm. So at this point now, because uh, my image is so, uh, what do you call it now? It's so, it's so, it's so, it's so little. I would have decided, okay, what can I connect this into now? I can do some dimensional reduction also as part of this. Okay, so there are a lot of things that you can actually do. But anything for image processing, this will work perfect. At least to give you an idea of the codes that you are writing. Because that's where I see drag and drop tools. Because sometimes when, sometimes when, people, when people copy codes or where they are modifying codes online, they are not immediately visualized what they are doing. I don't know if I'm speaking our mind, but no. with tools like this, you can begin to see what the codes are writing, what they actually translate to quite easily. For those who are into time series also, there is also time series also. There's also time series also that allows you to do a lot of analysis with your data series, with your data sets. For those line to GIS, you also have uh, a widget and an add on for, for that also. For those line to, yeah, okay, it's okay, it's okay, should I, no, uh, I'm trying to remind you of that woman. Uh, I will call her. She was asking on something around explainability. I said, there's also a module on what explainability within it also. Okay, educational. Google Sheets, K-Mains, Building Descent, a lot of stuff is available uh, on Orange. So I, I implore all of us to please, as much as possible, get familiar with Orange as much as possible. And if we have uh, enough time over the, over, I mean, this year, we can actually organize uh, an, an, a full session of Orange. So that we have, it could be a one week program, physical or hybrid as the case may be, that people can actually benefit from this as much as possible. Because there's one thing I keep telling people, let me stop the recording. Where is it again? Okay, let me do the final one again. Okay. Okay, I can't see Sarah. Sarah, we cannot see you. I can't see Sarah. Okay, we can see. Okay, we can see Noah. Okay. Okay. So, thanks all. I got it. Thanks so much all. So, bye everybody. Thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you. Expecting, expecting the date to be fixed for physical meeting. Definitely, definitely, definitely. My God. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. You're most welcome. Bye, bye, bye. bye.